coming. I'm uh, you just pointing on the cameras at me, and I'm a bit nervous. But anyway, let's <laughs> let's uh, I'll introduce myself. Uh, my name is David. My second name is Kampa. Um, I'm unrelated to the current sitting member. This is from a different district, and I'm actually from a different district. Um, I'm actually, uh, briefly, um, I worked for the Department of Lands and Fiscal Planning, and uh, I'm the first secretary to Minister Rosso, who is currently the Deputy Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea. I worked for him and resigned a few months ago to contest, uh, but mostly not this seat. Um, I've actually held a couple of positions in the private sector before I came over to the government and uh, worked for uh, Lens. And I initially worked for housing as well before I moved over to Lens Department after the change of government uh, when Marabe took over from O'Neill. So I've been with the department for a little over three, I think about three years. So I've been um, working for him as a press secretary to the ministry office. And I resigned, as I, as I said, I resigned to contest, uh, but must be not this year. Unfortunately, on the, this side of the uh, on most besides, only about seven or six people contested, and us in what must be noticed, I think we probably the chat in Papua New Guinea, uh, 76 of us, and I'm, I'm one of them who contested the election. My my reason to contest the election is um, I have only three um, policies. I said policies, but a lot of people who saw it, they said, no, these are not policies, they are like a work plan. Um, on my campaign posters, they are circulated out in the city. Throughout notice, uh, the first issue I had on on my uh, on my policies about land, and you guys are fully acquainted with the land issues here in Mosby and all the urban centres. But uh, in Lay and Port Mosby, there's a highlight of the problems that we have, especially the eviction part. And we've got a couple of evictions that is uh, being sanctioned by the court with court orders that they're evicting people, and mostly at the settlements and people who are. Uh, the low, low income earners are uh, affected by this problem and uh, we've had a couple of issues with them going and coming to courthouse and um, this is an ongoing problem in the city. So my po first policy why I contested the election is to uh, have a look at it and alleviate that problem. Meaning that we need to, we have too many settlements here in Mosby. I think we need to stop the settlement and then uh, put things into perspective by probably allowing the physical planning guys to go plan the uh, suburbs probably, I mean the settlements probably, and allot them probably, and then they can be able to convert those settlements into suburbs. So proper services like water and power and sewage can go into those places, and people can live in a, a decent, decent home while coming to work, and stop all the settlements. So um, there's a settlement to suburb program that's in place. I think NCDC is actually uh, taking courage of that, but uh, unfortunately, uh, with my experience with the department in that, we need to revisit that program. That's the reason why I made the first policy, and it is revisiting the settlement to suburb upgrade program. I think they didn't do it properly. Probably there's some issues with, I'm not sure what it is, but obviously there are issues. That's the reason why they're not uh, issuing titles here in Mosby. Unlike for us in May, I've helped the Minister for Minister, uh, Minister for Lens and Member for Lee to help him, uh, we have actually secured titles for, uh, for the Settlers, settlers in Mosby, which is a way forward because we can continue to get people to live in settlements and create more problems for the working class and the, uh, the general uh, law-abiding citizens. Um, so I'm not sure what's happening here in Mosby, but this is the issue that I want to take head on with the uh, settlement to suburb upgrade program. So on my policy, I said we need to revisit that settlement to suburb upgrade program. Secondly, I, um, uh, my second policy is about SME. SME is, um, is in fact a, a very important program in this um, in, in an urban city because a lot of people are into small markets like street peddling and selling middle nut and they're doing it in a, in a um, very um, a informal way. So um, a lot of people are preaching about uh, SME and the government's also allocated, I think the federal government's allocated about 200 million to DSB. And the money is taken in the bank and with NDB, National Development Bank. But unfortunately, the low income earners and people in the settlements, they can't be able to access that money. Because the problem with SME now is a lot of people are saying SME. But by definition, as you all know, uh, by definition, SME should be small to medium term business. So obviously, you must register a business, pay tax to IRC, register a tax, and open a bank account. Obviously, they can be able to write that check if you are running a business in a small way. But 
then you can be able to uh, migrate the small business, the black market, up to SME. So you can be able to call that an SME. If you register properly, pay tax, employ two or three people, like then you can pay them, and then you can call that SME. But when people are selling things like, um, say, well, mama's selling my block or donut or or selling my, kind of say, well, mama's are selling more clothes, blah blah, now something they're selling it in the market. That doesn't come in the SME category. It's from way away from the SME category. So uh, this is the reason why my second policy, I had it as um, we need to um, redefine the SME incubation program. So in the incubation program, we need to do the correct thing, put things into perspective, and get uh, uh, get this education to our people. So a lot of people don't, don't quite understand the SME sector. So we need to do that to help them improve that migrate from the black market up to the SME. So they know that they are in the SME, so they can be able to register their business from IPA and uh, also register with uh, IRC, so they can be, pay, be able to pay tax and do uh, tax returns and all those things. So at least they know that because if they go to the bank, obviously the bank's going to ask them questions. They have a checklist of probably 10 or 15 questions. And I think most of the people in the settlements, they can be able to answer those questions because probably the first question they'll answer would be to write their name and phone number or something. But how about the rest of the questions like, do you have collateral, do you have uh, security there, do you have this, do you have that? They won't be able to answer. That's the reason why the SME uh, program that's going on now is way out of the reach for these people, the book, our people in the settlements. And some of, some, some of you that live in the urban, urban areas like uh, Gordons and Morocco area, you can't be able to access the SME for that reason. And probably the two million, 200 million is stuck there. So I don't know who's getting all those loans. Probably the people who are privileged, they're getting those loans. But it's not trickling down to the small people. This is the reason why I want us to um, revisit the SME program. Um, which is uh, SME incubation program, so we need to uh, redefine that word SME. So I want to make it um, available to our small people in the settlement, so at least they can do something to access that fund. And at the moment, I don't think no one will access that SME uh, funding. Uh, thirdly, it's about uh, our local people, the local customary landowners. That includes the Motukoita people, the Koyaris, the Keremas, the, um, the generally Papuan people. We can get, uh, like Keremas, they need to go and bring their middlemen from the villages and come and sell it here. They can't get islanders to go and bring that market and sell it here. They need to get into them. So this has to be made available to them. Because, if, um, like I said, we had issues here where um, if this, like, National Capital District, if it's in, say, in Boroka or Chimbu or somewhere else, or in the islands like Tari or Webek, I think it, this city won't survive because of the level of aggression people have. They would have shut down the them long time ago. The should number them would have shut 20 or 30 years ago. This city would have been chaotic. This is the reason why a lot of elected leaders have failed to uh, look at the traditional landowners here in, in Mosby, especially the Motukoita people in the periphery of the city, the our Kwari people, the Goilalas, the Keramas, generally the Papuans. They are really peaceful people. And I don't know why the, the, the governor and the sitting member and all those people who are elected in Mosby, they can't look at their flight. What is the big problem about this? This is their land. We are doing business here. We're running tax and bus business, taxi business, rent house. But it's, they are really, really unfortunate in our city, eventually to become another settlement because of the intermarriages and that. So it's becoming a big problem, and I feel for them because uh, this is supposed to be their land. They can't be able to plant coffee or cocoa or something to sell uh, for money. But because all the land is taken up by government, the private sector, the settlers, everyone's taking up all the land. So where will they go? This is a big question I have, and then my third policy is about them, these people. I must look at them and help them, because uh, while uh, having said that, while I was looking for the Department of Lands, there are a lot of people coming for compensation and other things. Because I told them, uh, for those you notice, it's a privilege seat, being that we have all the landmark of this country, this uh, city, and part of it is in Northeast, which we have the national, uh, national parliament here in Northeast, we have the uh, international airport here in Northeast, and, um, Manasuka House here in Northeast, we have the central government office here in Northeast. These are some landmark buildings here in this country. But the local people, the landowners, where do they come into play here? We see, like, they've been neglected for a very long time. This is the reason why I'm, I feel for the central people, because they are not really aggressive. Because if you think about this in the islands, this city would have been shut down 10 years ago, like I said. You wouldn't have been in Manami already. But now they, they've given us land to do business and other things. And a lot of business people enjoy that. Most of us from the Union Islands or Southern region, or the islands or Nomad they come into the city, build their lives here. But they must respect the elected leaders in the event that they get inside. I want to look at it as, as, as a priority. 
to train and serve their interests because they own this land and there's nothing there for them in the city. So um, these are some of the things I'm planning to do. These are only my, uh, I call them policies, but a lot of people who heard me speaking, they said, no, these are not policies. They're your work plans. You're going to do that. I don't want to talk about, uh, a lot of people talk about conventional politics, politics of the 80s and 90s. They're different politics. I can't talk about water. I can't talk about power supply. I can't talk about, you know, sewage, all these things. They are for people in probably Kerema or Esala or in Lufa Open or Okapa or Silesale or somewhere. They don't have power. They don't have water supply. They can talk about this. The conventional way of playing politics is no good. We can use slang or like uh, idiomatic expressions on our posting or Facebook, whatever it is. We must talk about real things that are affecting this country. And the other thing that I noticed is like being in, in the, working for the government, I realized that we have 50% of the population here in the this room, parliament cabinet. The, a lot of, probably about 70%. Uh, we've got some really, uh, I mean leaders, uh, but we, I mean, uh, people nominated them, elected them to come into parliament. But unfortunately, they can't be able to ask the relevant questions. If you sit at the back, most of you have been in parliament, and you know. It's a sad scenario, but it's true. <coughs> if, you, if there's a one kilometer road from here to here, it would cost about two million. And if they inflate their price and uh, construct this road for probably six or eight, ten million, you know. There are people there who can't ask the relevant questions, that questions that will require, hey, this road is supposed to be two million. How do you inflate that? So if it's like some variation or something, probably 2.5 would be okay. But why are you going to seven, eight million for that, for the small road? So if we have a lot of educated people and people who understand that and can ask the relevant questions in parliament, then we have a right parliament, so I say. In this parliament, if we have, say, 50% of the people there, I mean, elected uh, representatives, if they're well articulated, they're able to ask some relevant questions and say, no, we can inflate that price. These are some of the real problems we have in parliament right now. We the people who are supposed to be there, um, I don't know, Muslim, 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 they're not asking questions because of the army, but I think you guys are well articulated with, I mean, well rest with this. Issues and you understand, but from your uh, team, I mean, job as like journalists and them, probably I don't know, there's some code of conduct or whatever you do, so like we have to report on certain issues, but these are some of the things that's happening here. So uh, it's a sad scenario, but it's true, it's happening. So this is a listen way, you see, corruption can try, people can do it, so they just get out of it easily. But I hope this election, a lot of people will elect some good leaders, not for themselves, but they must ask some relevant questions. I'm not a civil engineer. But I, I can be able to understand I, why this road costs uh, two million. Oh, I mean ten million. If it's a one kilometer road in Namlo, or some two million, uh, why why we should we inflate price just to cater for other people in the system? No, it can't happen. We are doing this, and a lot of people are affected by this. People in Gordons, I went there yesterday, last night, and uh, our families are uh, they in a urban setting. They can't do small things, you know. That's the reason why it's a little young people in this area. When you're about 21, now, one year, you should plan your life. Don't get married, carry a and come back into your parents' house. This is a, but they have no opportunity, you see. This is a reason we have the kind of leadership. A lot of people are thinking about, like we some talked about before, conventional politics, or when you power come. We have police station here, we have courthouse here, we have national parliament here, we've got education, we've got all the national services here mostly. Why would we be talking about conventional politics for the power and the 1980s here? We can continue to play the same politics here. Anyway, having said that, I've, uh, these are my three policies that I'm working on here, but um, as uh, a lot of people let me, they said, oh, David, these are, these are not your policies. They are like work plan, uh, things you can do. And people talk about education and other infrastructure. Forget about that. They are policies and the government department is handling those issues. I can't talk here because I will not have any impact in that area. At least I can be able to ask questions, but I can't do any changes because there are departments who are taking care of them. Um, I think I've, uh, I'm done with my policies here, but I've also got the paper circulating. I've been helping to do the, uh, I'm the founding chairman and the founder of this Chowari Foundation. The Chowari Foundation is a set up by me and a few of uh, my colleagues. We are, we've got this together for our Chowari people here in Mosby, living in the Mosby, uh, in Mosby. There have been like 10 or 4 generations living here. But unfortunately, their life's not in order. This is the reason why people are doing things in different clusters. And I told them, no, you have to get together, do this thing as a group, and you know, we have to be like civilized human beings here. Every time, you know, when I, I live at Morocco, when I go to work, you know, you get people on the way, you know, they sell peanuts and beetle nuts and, you know, they've got some cables and things hanging around on their neck and try to, you know, push it through the window. I said, go to a formal market. Why could you be doing this on the street? This is supposed to be the best capital of our Guinea. We can't be able to do these things on the road, you know. And that depicts the purpose of why are you coming to Mosby when people are money to make it most of it. You should go to a formal market. When I want to eat peanuts, I can go to Gordon's and find peanuts there. 
You can't be standing on the road because it's a traffic entered as well. Somebody kill you and then you say, you blame the driver, not the peanut seller. These are some of the things happening, but it's real. So uh, I hope we will find good leaders and I hope I get in. I'm trying my best to try and uh, admit, but uh, I think uh, I will just stop here. Thank you very much. Just in case you guys have some questions, you can ask. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Sorry, you didn't call your name. Uh, uh, Freddy. Fred, add your name and swear on your but this is my first time to meet you anyway. <laughs> Thanks, Freddy. Um, the Motu Koita people, um, really, um, I would say they are like, uh, they are like, uh, some, it's a blessing to us, yeah. for the city residents. The only thing I've said is, can, if you can distinguish the difference between them, they are very humble people, kind-hearted, very loving people. And then you compare us like islanders. You mix the two together. It's like, uh, this is a reason why when you look at it, you know, any human being for that matter, for humanity, purpose of humanity, like what I've done for Strava Foundation, these people must be given the opportunity. Because if it's someone, like I said earlier, if it's someone in Wabek or Agen or Simu or somewhere there, this city would have been shut 10 years ago. Because they are going to go shut the water there tomorrow. There will be a big fight. It will be chaotic. But because they are very humble people, peace-loving people, they gave us the city. And then people, are, they do business. Um, you know, government are you know, building up the infrastructure already. This is the reason why uh, well, I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to help them with is to try and identify the problems. If they didn't get compensation from the airport, the government has to pay them now. That's the normal people. If to, whatever's due to them must be paid to them. So they need to improve their lifestyle. They need to have proper houses, decent houses, and then properly allow those blocks where they're saying like Mauro village. Huh? The people from outside are intermarrying them again. And then there are people building like settlements in there again. It's becoming chaotic. And then they will lose their identity of being the Moitu Koitas. In Anobara, they'll lose their identity. So we will have what they call an uh, identity crisis. You will know if there's a quarter caste or half caste or people in there. He will say, obviously, I'm from Anobara, he's from Anobara. You don't know where it is. But the traditional local landowners, we must identify this. There are problems there. You know, water streets, it has to be given to them for free. Why should you charge them? They are our people here. We are getting bills. What are we doing with the money? Nothing. This is the reason why, you know, I want to be adamant. If I get into parliament or any and, uh, NCDC for that matter, I want to tell them, what's the issue here? What's the big deal? This country is not going to shut down tomorrow because of these guys have free water. No. You can be able to, you've got a, probably, a, I want to try to distinguish, I mean, compare the difference. Like uh, somebody's got a small break or what? You can get the 10 million going in the country. There. So, how are these people? You try and look at the one. There's no one in between because this people must be given an opportunity because it's like down there. Employ, big money, blessing more. That's the level. And there's two ways about it. Like, you know, salvi more, travel, eating him. A lot of people are there, no doctors or, you know, lawyers, everyone living in the villages there. They are ordinary village people. Huh? But the government must look so and help him more. Big money, blessing more. like a brown roll, eating him. And then we can get settlers to take over their land, government to take over their land. Everything they can do there because it's their land. So this is a reason why I want to, uh, because I have a lot of issues while I'm working. Because they are trying to play competition. And you know, a lot of people, there's history there and the records there in the department. Mm -hmm. Most of the competition that's paid is to the whole of how many islands provinces. No one in the United States claims competition. No one in Southern region claims competition. And I'm really sorry for them, you know. This is supposed to be their land, not ours. Time people start over here. It's different. So. We must also accord them the respect where it's due, you know, and then help them. They are our local people. We must give them what belongs to them. So, what is um, all the previous all members of failure to accord them the protocol and respect to them? So, they must, they must uh, equally uh, participate in the business sector. At least they have something to do. Anyway, they can carry on with their life. But only got pinging into another generation will come up. They can't live like that. We can't neglect them. This is the issue. That's why I have on, on my third policy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Meaning that um, what I want to do, the clusters of settlements we have, yeah. we need to identify them and stop the settlements. Yep. If there's anybody else coming, I think you need to go back. Mm -hmm. And those ones that are coming, you might abide by a kind of some in the settlements now. I took some from family that relative or local stuff. We talk about we need to be careful here in the settlements. Block now we start. Eh? We can't continue to live like that. We are blaming the Chinese. We are blaming the Bangladeshi. We are blaming everybody except ourselves. You see, every time you see a Chinese man standing on the tool, he's looking at the tin. Why is he doing that? A cash register. There's some money in there. You see the civilization back there thousands of years, thousands of years back. We just came out of the bush 45 years ago. So why are they looking at that thing? You are blaming them, but you need to honest your life, do it properly. You can live like you are gonna drink blueberry coconut, but you got said you can't be in here. This is unplanned kid, you know. You didn't plant this kid. So obviously you have a blueberry pirini. You think about I told them. And then you can't be in here, you're going back into your parents' house. It's a shame. You're supposed to grow up. You got to you are able to sustain your life, do it properly, but opportunity is mostly, it's endless. All the commercial business activities, everything ain't noticed. And what's happening now is like, 
Suppose we go to a then some 50 kina or 30 kina if you take it to uh, a small place like Kabum Airport, a uh, strip in Kabum or medium mm -hmm. for that matter. You give one or 20 kina already, they will tell you, oh, people of money, you're not trading. Mm -hmm. Probably five kina or two kina, they might change it. But here, one of the in the table market server, he's selling 10 to a roll, he can be able to change the kina. This is how much the case money is in Mosby, you see. This is the difference. And these are the kind of problems we have here, so that's why people need to. Lucy was just like, you know, all of you guys are educated. Okay, you are living in settlements. And I feel for you guys. You can raise your kid in a settlement, because all man talk about they're saying all kinds of things, which you can't say in a home, but they can say in a settlement. Like, whether this is your opinion, you can't This is the reason why I want to bring this down. Re we see the settlement to sell an upgrade for it, cut it into a three or four hundred uh, square meter blocks, allow it, give them a piece of paper called title, and then you start to tell them what is new. And people must have fixed their dress up. Like in Australia, somewhere you have section on the ball, street section, and then they people want to meet you. They deliver a mail straight to the house. We can't do that here. It's, like it's been introduced to us, but we are not doing it properly. You know, we've got people who are, you know, like, also, I used to say this, uh, this uh, one example, where people want to meet you. can't do that. You can use a razor blade to cut this tree at the back down. Mango tree at the back, you can use a razor blade. But what will you need to cut the tree? X. I can use a X to a messing around grass I need to use a, what do you mean? You need to put things into perspective. All my members are an adult's job a small kid can do. When we said small kid in there, what do you expect them to do? Or oh, you put this lapayo stone, me back and back the way. By the time you get after one hour, he's still waiting for you with him. It's a really big insight. That's a problem. Yeah. We need to somebody who's well actually understand the issue, the mm. real issues that we have. Mm. You don't have to be a cash millionaire to enjoy life. No. In humanity, you must look out the understanding of mama. You need to have a privilege and you know what I mean in your life. Mm. And do this thing and make this a city for us to live in. We can't get people in there who get all kinds of things and they said, no, we'll do this, this. No, we don't want to play conventional politics. Say real things that can change our life. Mm. This is the kind of idea we want them. I'm talking to my uh, supporters and people who are doing my uh, rallies. I told them, look, if I'm on the rock, don't worry about me. You find someone, we want to, a good leader to go inside and least change the world we live in most be. And probably PNC for that matter. You mean that we want to legally manage what you call it, one or whatever you call it, they made a complete mess out of the place. Mm -hmm. So this is the reason we want to find someone who must understand what they are doing. Mm -hmm. And then in parliament now, people are millions of billions of kids are contract out. And if you're cutting your deal, do it properly for the benefit of this country. Mm -hmm. But you must do it and you must ask the relevant questions. You're not going to wait until we meet and sign out, they get you alone, they get out, and that's it. You are done. Mm -hmm. This is not the kind of leaders, leaders we need in this parliament. So we, if we have 50% of leaders who are thinking along that line, this country will definitely go forward. You trust me. We are very good people here. We have got huge potential. But we've got all the, we look here, 75% of the people in there. We're supposed to have a bunch of presidential place here. We're going to have a national parliamentary. It's a total waste. No, you can love nobody, man. Mm -hmm. It's this true. <laughs> this is the reason a lot of people think for themselves. And, they can send their kids to Australia and buy a house in Australia or live in mm -hmm. Dubai or anywhere. I can't send my kids to Australia, I have no money. I can't live in Dubai and not go to luxury like that. You think about the cost. Hey, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. And then when people inflate that, they cut deals. But let me say, I'm not something. Anyway, later we'll explain this. <laughs> this is our